Welcome to episode 54 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host today. And today we take a trip to New York City. No, you're going to say Testing no. one, two, one, no, two, one, No, we will two. rock you is what oh, you're yeah. doing. You're in the middle of that. Boom, boom, ch. Boom, boom, ch. Boom, boom, ch. Boom, boom, ch. You got mud on your face, you big disgrace. Kicking your can all over the place. I was able to go and do, I think, a really much, much, much awaited podcast with Claude Silver, the chief heart officer of VaynerMedia. Um, Claude and I have been friends now, building friendship over the last two years, and several times I've tried to, to get it on the schedule. Never worked out. I'm glad that it didn't work out because there's an element of kind of the growth that has come over the last two years and the experience that has come. That I think we were able to have a lot better of a conversation. And so today we're going to be talking about the people side of business. And I've been kind of tweeting and I've been posting on LinkedIn and Instagram a lot of people-based things lately because it's been on my mind. Uh, Congruent is growing. The The team here is getting bigger. So like I'm back into like, okay, how do we, how do we scale the special sauce that we have right now? How do, how do we do that? And there's nobody better than the people side of business, I don't think, than Claude Silver. And a lot of this audience, we have a lot of auto dealers, everybody from you know one store to multi-billion dollar dealer groups that pay attention to this. Also a lot of entrepreneurs, small business. So I think the people side of business is really where it's won and lost in this connection economy that we have. And connection economy isn't just customer-based, but the connection economy is also internally based and company culture and how people feel at work. Because if you feel whole as a person, you're gonna put out better work, you're gonna take better care of the customers, and that's just the way it is. Everything, everything is connected. You know, I follow Claude on LinkedIn, and if you don't follow her on LinkedIn and you're a professional, a lot of good, practical, professional advice there. One of the concepts that she was talking about this week, it said, you know, way back in the day, getting and keeping a good job and a good career was about strength, like literally physical strength. And then that kind of pivoted and started to turn to more of intelligence. And it's like, how smart can you be to build an organization or accomplish something? But the company of the future, and she would argue also today, and you know that this is what she's building at VaynerMedia under, you know, direct report to Gary Vaynerchuk, who wants to build the honey empire, which is, you know, I want to build the greatest human organization on the planet. I want to show everybody that you can grow a company, have amazing results, and actually be an amazing place to work and have people feel valued and appreciated. So Claude is the tip of the spear on that initiative. And so Claude said the company of the future and what she's building right now is a company where heart is the strength of the company. I know initially that might sound like, oh, that's a little light. That's a little 50,000 feet. You don't understand my business. And I'll say the majority of businesses, or if not all of them, where the people feel safe and appreciated and like they're moving forward, their career is developing and they're developing as a person, they're going to be a better member of the team. They're going to be more fulfilled. They're going to produce better results. It's funny how that happens. This isn't just in the workplace, but it's also in your other relationships, right? It's just human behavior. So we have an, a great, amazing conversation. I enjoyed it so much. I think that some of the little tips that she's going to drop are ones that you can actually apply. And that's what I challenged her with at the beginning of the podcast. It's kind of like having money in the stock market. There's, there's a monetary value associated with the stock that I have. But until you sell it, until you realize the revenue, it doesn't really exist. So I think it's the same with social media. I can give you high concepts all day. But until you take something that you can actually realize and use and deploy, until you do that, there's no value there. It's just on paper. It's just paper value. I had no idea what she was going to say. And I can just say that she delivered. So I hope you enjoy this podcast, interview, uh, video, audio, however you consume this content. I hope you really enjoy meeting Claude Silver if you've never met her for the first time or you get another level of depth to the woman that's the tip of the spear in such an amazing organization. I took your advice before you gave it. So, and so it is. So it is. We finally get to have a conversation here, recorded for the audience, for ourselves. Thank you so much for giving me some time. Thank you. Yes. This is where we met. 
Well, we met it in that room over there. No, it was pretty much here. We had some magic here. So actually, I shared this a little bit before, but the principle of clarity, right, which now has a logo and, and the whole thing, it originated in this office. I actually think I was sitting in this spot. You, you may have been over there a little bit. And I just wanted 15 minutes of your time. And you gave it to me. You didn't know who I was, but I wrote a nice enough email. And we ended up talking for an hour and you did your thing. And you said, well, what, what do you like doing? Tell me about you. And then you said, I don't think you heard yourself say this. I don't know if you heard yourself say this, but you really enjoy it when people find clarity, whether that's through the marketing process or as an employee that finds purpose. And I was like, yes. And I walked out of the building and I recorded a little video that said, that woman has some good insight and actually helped me a little, understand a little bit about um, myself and get some clarity, which was kind of unexpected. Uh, but the word clarity came up quite a bit. So um, from that aspect, I'm going to call this a win. Yeah. And ever since. Oh, I have the chills. I have the chills. And I have your coin. Yeah. Oh. But it, it just made so much sense. And also just we talked a lot about spirituality that day. Sure and you're very clear on that mm -hmm. and religion and family and and you know, where your mind is and your heart is. And so it just all the laddered heart. up to that. Heart more than the mind usually. It's the heart. Yeah, it's the heart. So And the beard. And the beard. This, this wasn't always there. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. Um, but people often tell me, like Patrick's like, hey, if you shave that, you could go into, no one will know who you are. Absolutely. So my, I don't know, my kids would, but my youngest would probably be a little weirded out. Scream, probably. We're going in a weird, weird yeah, place. Okay. But when I, I was a kid, my dad <laughs> had a mustache, and he shaved it, and no one wanted to talk to him. Really? I think one of my sisters cried, because <laughs> he had a mustache. Yeah. But we digress. It's cool. But today, your position as Chief Heart Officer of VaynerX now, right? What do you do? So it's like a kind of a confusing title, Chief Heart Officer, and there's a lot of conversation around it, I think, in the in, in industry in general, in HR. What do you do? Yeah, I listen. I listen. I collect information. I act when I can. I, I want to make Vayner X, Vayner Media, all of our companies, the happiest place, the healthiest place to work. In order to do that, I need to talk to people. I need to hear what's up, what's mm -hmm. working, what's not working. What do you need? You need more training, more learning development. So what do I do is, is I do this just without the microphone. And I, I connect people to help them find their way and navigate at a, at a very large agency now. We're at such a scale where it's not just, you can't just get Gary's time today. Mm -hmm. So what are you gonna do in light of the fact that you can't get to Gary? Who can give you a little bit more of, uh, of some seeds before you get there? So it's a lot of navigating, it's a lot of listening, it's a lot of holding space, which is really active listening without judging someone. Um, and it's a a acting. I mean, it's one thing to listen to you and to be your Sherpa mm -hmm. on this journey, which I am, mm -hmm. but you also want me to do something and make your life better here, or at least help you to identify how you can make your life better. So. What I'm hearing you say, we'll go counseling. What I'm hearing you say, we're active listening. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I've practiced with this. <laughs> my wife will my wife will tell you she send, benefits from send the checks too. Yeah, yeah. No, I've learned from experience. But but what I'm hearing you say basically is that what you do is more than it actually from what you just said, it doesn't sound like it has much of a direct P and L correlation putting people in the right slot, it seems like it has the opposite where you kind of help people find, not just in this building, but in general, that freedom and kind of judgment-free zone. That's kind of what I'm getting. Is Yeah, I help people identify and remove roadblocks so that they can be the best them that they want to be. However, it's funny that you said, you know, it doesn't sound like it has much P&L. Absolutely not. I didn't, I didn't mention those, those words at all. Mm -hmm. But success comes in different shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. So yes, monetary success is extremely important, and that is a bottom line and a top line. But success of a human being and how they feel and what they're going to do after they leave this room is, you know, umpteens more important to me, mm -hmm. um, because that carries that carries them through whatever challenges are ahead of them, whatever challenges their 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 deskmate has. I mean. It's a knock-on effect, and and 
so anyway, that I can go on and on about my thoughts on P and L and success. For, yeah. Um, and by the way, it's super important. We need to keep the lights on in here. And I and I love that, and I admire that about uh, working in such a healthy business. Mm-hmm. But it's the people that make this place run, mm-hmm. not the machines. Mm-hmm. What is oh. so to kind of get us in that direction? What is what is the the issue that comes to the top of mind that you feel like most people have to get through? Like, is there a general theme? Like when people are having issues or they just need help, like, is, does one come to mind yeah. above the others? I mean, self-awareness. And so, okay, that can sound really fuzzy to some people. Right. If you're like, oh, self-awareness, right. blah, blah, blah. What that means is being accountable for who you are, period. I think anyone can identify with that. Yeah. Being accountable for who you are, your actions, your uh, your thoughts, obviously, mm-hmm. and what you say. Because mm-hmm. what you say and who you are carry so much power, not only to you, but to everyone around you. So having the awareness that you have the power to make or break someone's day, I think anyone could uh, subscribe to. So the level of self-awareness that I've been using and I've heard and started using a lot this phrase, if you feel it, you own it, mm-hmm. is that tie into self-awareness? Yeah, so I, I'm going to flip that for one quick okay, second. Okay, sure. Spot it, you got it. Have okay. You heard that one? I like that. Yeah. So if you spot something in someone else, mm-hmm. whether or not you don't like it or you like it, most often you have that trait within you. That's why you're so magnetized to it. Interesting. Yeah. So that's the that's what I use. And often it has been used in a negative context, but I use it in a positive context. Like it takes like, one to know one. Yeah. And it's like, it takes one to know one and also like birds of a feather. Yep. And why I like hanging out with you, Paul, because you make me feel good, which makes me think that I probably make you feel good too. Gotcha. You know, we're both. Right, it works on positive and negative. Yeah. Like we're both fairly simple people. Mm-hmm. There's no like context here. Yeah. Um, and so spot it, you got it. Anyway, sorry, I digress. That's good. No, that's that works. Yeah, it's it's really so, the same thing. But let's let's take it let's take it just a slight turn in Albuquerque here for all those listeners in Albuquerque. All right, time to, if you have a couch nearby, lay yeah. on it. All right, <laughs> yeah. look at this guy. <laughs> I, I I continue to go back to this idea that uh, the thought, the notion that human beings have so much power. So what I think about you really is how I will start to see you. If I see you as another human being that's doing their best in life and, and helping others and you have a generous heart and you work hard and your work all of, all of a sudden like that's who you are in my eyes. Okay. If I see you as Mr. Complainer, well then you become Mr. Complainer. That's what you are. And by the way, I have a lot of power as a human being. So don't think that other people aren't going to see you as Mr. Complainer. Mm-hmm. And that's it's such a delicate line that mm-hmm. we, uh, you know, it, it's a tightrope, yeah. right? Because one quick second of me judging you really can can be cat- catastrophic for your day, mm-hmm. for your mood, for the way someone else comes up to you and it's like, hey, dude, you know, you got a pen I can borrow? No. Yeah. You know? Right. And then, and then you take that back to, like, the business runs on people. Do you think that person that now feels like that is going to be productive or is going to do good work or is going to help encourage somebody else or work with a client well. Yeah, totally. Or like go the extra mile when someone comes in and they don't know what they're shopping for. Mm -hmm. You know, go the extra mile when someone has no idea, you know, what what it really means to like uh, rotate your tires. Mm -hmm. Like you got to work, we got to, we got to meet people where they are. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, you know, so what do I do here? I meet people where they are. What are some basic things? I know you said empathy, but like, what are some things that you would coach every leader that's watching this, every business owner, like to just a little mind shift or a little deploying thing that they can do? Yeah. Can I curse on this podcast? You can. We can always bleep it out if it doesn't work. (laughs) Give a shit about people. (laughs) The fact of the matter is, no matter if you are talking to car dealers, you're talking to dentists, you are talking to marketers. Like for real, not like fake because I'm supposed to. Yeah. Like... Hey, how are you doing? Yeah. How's your aunt? She's in the hospital. I heard your cat died. Dude, I heard your son got engaged. How's that? Thing is is we 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 all of us, every single one of us, we cut off half of ourselves when we walk into work and pretend that we don't have this other life. Why do you think that? I think that we were I think Back in the dark ages and maybe the fifties, <laughs> uh, okay. forties. I you know I wasn't around, so um, 
uh, we were we were separating work and life, mm-hmm. and there were roles that helped us separate work and life. Dad went off to work. Mom stayed home mm-hmm. in the kitchen. And dad went off to work and closed off the fact that he had this other life. Maybe he had a photo of mom and kids on the desk. But we segregated and separated mm-hmm. ourselves. Yeah. And I, I also think that carried its way into the world of HR, mm-hmm. by the way, which I'm in and, and needs a complete rebranding. Mm-hmm. Because we are in the business of people. And that means I need, it's my responsibility, and as a business owner, it's your responsibility, and it's as, as a coworker, it's your responsibility to care about other people and the culture that you are working in. Mm-hmm. That is like, whoa, that is not just Gary's responsibility. It's not just Paul's responsibility. It's not just Claude's responsibility, but it's everyone's responsibility. Mm-hmm. And so that means we need to like get jiggy with the fact that like Billy over there lost his cat yesterday, and that sucks. That was his best friend for and seventeen years. And maybe you years. don't even like cats. I don't but like Billy. cats, <laughs> but but Billy really did. He likes cats. He loves you know? cats. So like, I think you know. So for the people that don't have a Claude, well, just just be you. Just care. That's 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 it's the key. It's funny, like golden yeah. rule, right? Yeah. Ancient wisdom. Yeah treat others like you want to be treated. I've been pivoting off that a little bit lately because there's this gap between the millennial workforce and the old guard, right? And there's a lot of misunderstanding or lack of understanding. So it's almost like you have to do more work because you might treat them like you would want to be treated, but that's not how they want to be treated. Right. It's almost like the empathy deploys and say, treat others like you know they want to be treated. So that takes an enormous amount of patience and it takes an enormous amount of desire mm-hmm. to to actually care about another person like that. That's so key. And business isn't a patient thing. No. So, listen, the late, great Maya Angelou, I think you can see this. I have it in two places in this room. Like this. You know, so we'll have it. I, I learned that people forget what you said, people forget what you did, but people will never yes. forget how you made, made them, them feel. feel. And please, that is not a new concept. And... We jive off of how I make you feel and how you make me feel. You and I wouldn't have this relationship still if back in the day, two years ago, when you walked in this room, you kind of had a shitty experience or I was in a bad mood or all of a sudden you said something. Or even if it was like, okay. It was okay. It didn't have to be bad, right? We like each other. I met your wife. You've been interested in my baby. Like, we care about each other and there's nothing in it for either one of us Mm -hmm. other than I want the best for you and you want the best for me. Yeah. And. I know that you happen to work with people at, at VaynerX, and that's great. I'm not in those meetings. Yep. Like, I love that you're here, yep. but it's not because you're giving us your business is not that why you're here. It doesn't change your life. No. Your work no, life. I'm happy. Your I'm yeah. happy I get to see you. Yeah. So, you know, this idea of empathy, though, extends from not only what's inside of our workplaces, mm-hmm. in our homes, that kind of culture, but it is so important what that, consu- that consumer, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. When that customer walks through that door, consumer, cons- however you want right. to call it. Right, it's transferable. It is the same. The same skill. It is the same. So this is the deal. Just just because we are, this podcast and the audience are working with people in the automotive industry mm-hmm. doesn't mean that the people in the automotive industry are not clients or customers of a bank, of right. Walgreens, right. of Applebee's, of Chuck E. Cheese, mm-hmm. uh, doesn't mean that like of course same 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 Mm -hmm. the way i want to be treated when i leave this building is the same way i'm going to treat someone when i'm in this building yep so to pivot from that um you said before we started you said you know i've been thinking about automotive and i think that it's a lot like a hospitality industry and we stopped right there i was like wait yeah let's not talk about that oh this could be a gold nugget yeah so i don't know what that means Yeah. But why don't you explain? All right. So in the hospitality industry, what do we do? We take care of people. Yep. Okay. In the automotive industry, yes, you take care of people, but you are putting me in a vehicle Mm -hmm. or you are dressing up my vehicle. You are fixing my vehicle. Mm -hmm. You are selling me a vehicle. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is more important than my safety and happiness and mental health inside of a vehicle Mm -hmm. than you know, it's better. Than most you spend more hours and hours and hours. It's the center I, point of so much of your life, especially if you live in suburbia. Yeah, I have a family in in that automobile. Mm-hmm. I, I I I am trusted on the road as another driver. Like I need to be of sound mind. That means like 
you are providing me with a hospitality service. Just like if I went to a hotel and I got a crappy pillow and I got a crick in my neck, I would be so pissed off. What an interesting way to approach it. Yeah, it just, it made sense to me. Knowing that I was going to talk to you today, I thought about it earlier and I was like, it's the same thing as when I go to a gym. Yep. It's if if the gym is a good gym, yep. they've made it they've made it right for me. They know that I need a bottle of water and I don't want to go buy a three dollar bottle of water. So yep. just make it easy for me. Yep. You know what I mean? Make it easy. Give me a clean towel. Yeah. Those little things are those little touches mm-hmm. go a long way. And so in the automotive industry, I I think that they still go a long way. You know what? And I don't know if this happens because I have not washed my car in so long. But when you go to a car a lot wash, of car washes in New York City. I, I know there's one down the street that sketch sure. Sketchville, so I won't go in there. But you know when you go into a, a car wash and you don't pay to get the air freshener, but they freshen your car. Yeah, that's like the best feeling in the world. So you like that? Well, I like because the fact they thought of it. It's the thought and like a surprise and delight. Surprise and delight. Now right. I might be allergic or gag. But it's the surprise and delight. Yeah. It's that extra thing. Yeah. So exactly. So imagine that it was a it was the eucalyptus or pine or peppermint Whatever. smell that yeah. I like. Like, you just lifted my mood. For you like may- two cents. It's barely right. If even. Yeah. Yeah. If even. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying in terms of like this the hospitality, empathy, same, yeah. same. Like, what do you do in a hospital? You take care of me. Yeah. Take care of every single need I have. Yep. You and know? what's gonna make the what's gonna make the impact, right? The nursing staff, the right. people who have the touch point. That's right. Who like things could have been worse at the hospital, but you had this amazing nurse who was really attentive and was thoughtful and brought you the bottle of water. Or well, and took care of my family. Took care of your family. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's kind of important. Like, too. like that's I see. So if we go back to this ecosystem of what happens at work, it is not just what happens to Claude when she walks in this door. Mm-hmm. You want to take into account the whole person. I'm going to be a much more productive person if you care about me. Yeah, and you feel holistically well. Yeah, so anyone can do this. This isn't magic, and I do not have a PhD mm-hmm. or an MBA. So <laughs> we got to come up with another. Time. In fact, I went. I, it, you know, it took me ten years to graduate with an undergraduate degree. So it's okay. School I don't even life. Have one, there so. you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, so if someone watching listening to this walks out of their office right now or walks into the office tomorrow and they have one thing in their mind if you could implant one sentence that you know they would think before they saw the first person of the day what would you, what would you want their thought to be make that person feel better than they do by the time you leave that's amazing yeah right it's very easy whatever it's, you do make them feel better it's simple i say simple but not easy yeah so that's what it is. When you see that next person, the thought, how can I make them feel better than they than they already do? Than they do right now. And they now. could already feel as a 10, so make them feel as an 11. Yeah. Because what that does is it has a knock-on domino effect yep. that that person will then be in a good vibe to go to that person and Sally and Jack and Jill. That and customer's going to walk in and siphon from that. It's the best. It's like, you know, Starbucks did that brilliantly. They said, we want to deliver a little bit of pep with every cup of coffee. Right? Just a little bit, whether that's a compliment, yeah. whether that's, right? And yeah. that's that, right? They want, if you leave feeling just a little bit better. A little bit better. Right? Yeah. You want to go back there. Right. And I mean, it's even funny when they misspell my name. Like, right. that's, right. I don't take it as an insult. It's <laughs> right. kind of funny, yeah. you know? So that, that's, I think, really practical. Yeah. That's I'm, really practical. I'm glad. I'm, I'm really glad. And I think the other thing is just like, remember that we have a lot of power. And so how do we want to use that power yep. to make people feel good? And that, in turn, will bring sales in the door. It just will. So it's understand, right, you have power. Like, you have this weapon that has the ability to cut somebody down or build them up. Whether or not you know it, you're swinging it every day, That's all right. day. Yeah. Guess why? Your eyes do it. Your body language does it. Your your voice does your tone, it. Your tone breath, does your it. Like, let's right. be honest. The like verbals It's yeah, 90%. And, and guess what? We're all sensitive human beings. Not just the little Billy in the corner there that we call sensitive or, or Jill. Like, yeah. we're all... This is just flesh, man. Pretty perceptive. This is not armor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great, too. Yeah. Well, I think that that's more than I expected. 
So that's good. You over delivered <laughs> <laughs> for the clarity compressed audience. Um, how can people follow what you're doing? Like, where are you on social media? So, because I know there are going to be people that want to like connect and like follow along. Yeah, it's the best way. Um, well, I piggyback off of Paul, so follow me on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you the idea. Yeah, Instagram, Claude Silver, uh, LinkedIn, well, we'll, Twitter. Yeah. Same thing. Anything. We'll whatever. link it up in all the bios and yeah. the notes. Yeah, I get back to anyone that writes me. It might take me a couple of days, but. And if you're in the professional world, like if you're in the HR world, um, Claude posts a lot of profession, pro-level content on LinkedIn around okay. HR, she speaks a lot, and like a lot of really useful pieces of media. So um, it's a little masterclass. Thank you. For free. Peace and love. Yes. Love you. Love you too. Thanks. So there you have it. Claude, was I wrong? She delivered, didn't she? Oh, yes, she did. And uh, we're going to link up down below where you can connect with her. She does answer messages. So if you want to reach out, you have a question, she will answer. It might take her a little bit. She's very busy, but she will answer. And I hope you connect with her. And that does it for episode 54. A lot of crazy things are going on in congruent Paul J. Daily world right now. We're working on a project. We're calling it the Manifesto. I cannot wait to share this with the world. Um, specifically, you know, it's for auto dealers because I think that something's never, ever, ever been done in automotive like we're about to release. But I also think it has huge implications for anyone that's in B2C, anyone that's in retail and anyone that's managing a team that serves retail. So tons more on that to come. I mean a ton. There's going to be an ecosystem around this thing. Uh, you know, and we'll probably pivot. Uh, you'll, you'll see and hear about it, I'm sure. So we have a lot coming out with this manifesto project. Aside from that, um, some speaking things have come up, really starting to pick up some momentum. Um, in April, we'll link the dates below. In April, going to be in New York City, speaking at the Driving Sales Presidents Club. It's a pretty exclusive dealer-only event. Um, it's also, there's some other automotive international auto show in New York City around this event. So check it out. We'll link it below. We have promo codes, $200 off a ticket if you use uh, our promo code. Also in May, going to be speaking at DMSC, um, that's Digital Marketing uh, Solutions Conference, I think, uh, in Napa, California. And uh, again, another really great intimate event, invite only, 100 dealers, dealer groups in the room. And uh, I was at the event last year and it was so good, so impactful. Talk about a place where you can make progress. So aside from that, oh, what was I saying? I was saying, yes, we have an email list. If you sign up for the email list, we're going to start to include a lot more curated content. And the intent isn't that we just give you something and say, hey, listen to our stuff. I and my team are going to go through and pick the things that we think are relevant that you should be paying attention to. So if you follow this content and you follow me on social and you like the vibe, we're going to try to pick up things that I find interesting and I find important so we can feed those. So if you look at the email, you can find value. If not, I want to make it really quick so you can flip it. I understand. I'm on tons of these lists too. So if you can, every once in a while, you find an article that's really helpful and we hope to serve you that type of content. And that's it. Thank you so much for listening and watching this stuff. I don't take it lightly. I really appreciate your attention and I'm doing everything I can to work twice as hard to bring you value. So if there's anything you want to see covered, please hit me up, let me know, and we're going to work hard to get it done. Have an amazing week. Have an amazing month. We're closing out February and pursue clarity. Oh, <laughs>